There's times to be unified and there's times to divide, amen? And how many of you know that there is an antichrist agenda that actually will create a counterfeit unity? Something that the Lord has been urging in this hour for the church and especially for this place is the spirit of unity. Now we hear a lot of messages about why we need to be unified and unity and these different things and the church seems to always have a struggle with unity, amen? But there's times to be unified and there's times to divide, amen? There's certain things that we can unite in and things that we cannot be united in, amen? So what we don't want is a false unity. And how many of you know that there is an antichrist agenda that actually will create a counterfeit unity? You ever seen those bumper stickers coexist? And it's every religion symbol together? Morning. The antichrist agenda will be a one world religion and a one world government. But an antichrist can't sell that unless there is a great divide first, right? So we know that there's still time before that comes, but in order to have a one world religion and a one world government, you're also gonna need a one world currency. And how many of you know they're working on that? <laughs> they're trying to eliminate the dollar, they're trying to make a, a digital currency, the primary currency, and not crypto, they're trying to create their own version. Have you guys heard about the Federal Reserve looking to create something called fed now where before the money goes to your bank account it goes to the feds and the feds will determine whether you get the money or not how many of you know it's coming how many of you know that covid was just a pretest to see how many people will easily take the mark of the beast uh-oh this is the type of stuff that is coming and the reality is, is the world will be more united in the last days than you can imagine. The world will actually be very united. Now, they'll be divided in the sense that it will cause wars and rumors of wars, civil wars. In that context, it'll seem like they're divided. You create the chaos so you can sell the cure, right? So it's fabricated division fabricated chaos in order to offer a counterfeit unity so that's what will come in the last days that's how the antichrist will rise to power different world major world economies major world governments will war against each other and the antichrist is going to come and he's going to say peace peace let's create peace let's sign all of these peace treaties and then you got the false prophet who's going to unite all the world religions and you already have a uh, pope signing peace treaties with uh the buddhists and the muslims and they're already creating uh temples called chrislam where it's christians and muslims worshiping in the same temple and they're creating all the all this is happening already you guys know that right so all these things are already happening to prepare the way for the false prophet and the antichrist that will be mentioned in the book of revelations amen so the bible says in the last days there'll be a great deception and there'll be a spirit of delusion and many will be deceived and the deception will be so great even the elect could be deceived Meaning even those of you who are born again, on fire for God, shouting Jesus, you can be susceptible to deception in the last days. Unless, say unless, you truly know the Lord and his spirit. And the Bible says that he will not leave you as orphans and he will show you of things to come and he will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he is the spirit of truth and he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. But how many of you know you need the word of God in you so that you know the truth? Amen. And you won't be deceived. And how many of you know the devil knows the Bible? So you better know your Bible better than the devil knows his Bible. <laughs> Did you hear about China? They're rewriting their own Bible. This is the same thing Hitler did when he rose to power. 
he created his own version of the Bible that created that hatred towards the Jews to further push his agenda to kill the Jews. You guys follow? They're currently invading your schools right now. If you didn't know this, if you go back to 2020, when the shutdown happened, they actually found dumpsters in the back of the schools with a bunch of history books, American history books. And in the back of public schools, in the dumpsters, all of the American history books were in the dumpster during the shutdown. Meaning they had something, they were planning something during the shutdown. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and give you guys conspiracies. I'm just telling you the truth. But I, there's a reason I'm saying this. Because before you capture a generation or a nation, you first include indoctrination. And indoctrination starts with the children. Hitler even said, first you take the children, then you take the nation. Are you following? This is why last week the Spirit of the Lord urged us to intercede for the children in this generation. And he's urging us to really take a bold stand and not be cowards in this hour. And when I say take a bold stand, it means you actually stand for something. Not on a Facebook post. Start in your home and then seek the Lord at how you can get more involved at the level of influence you've been granted because how many of you know everyone has a level of influence everyone does wherever you are you have some measure of influence and you have and if you're willing <laughs> the Lord will hand a torch to you that maybe someone else didn't want to take and he'll give you even a greater purpose to launch forward so don't ever feel like you have no purpose there's nothing you can do even as an intercessor, there's great things you can do in the realms of the spirit. And you'll know this because the moment you start interceding, warfare will come. And you're like, wait a minute, why am I getting attacked? Well, because you did something in the realms. How many of you had a, a pretty interesting week this last week? You got some pushback, right, from the enemy. Guys, it's part of it. If you're going to destroy hell, hell is going to fight back. You see, demons and the kingdom of darkness is not like a bunch of Christians. <laughs> Christians get hit and they cry. Demons get hit and they call back up. The kingdom of darkness is very much unified. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was casting out demons, <laughs> the Pharisees, who were part of the Jewish church, the synagogue, they came against Jesus and said, you're casting out demons by the power of demons. And Jesus was like, are y'all that stupid? He's like, Satan can't cast out Satan. And Satan's kingdom is not like yours. He says a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Satan's not that dumb to divide his own kingdom. But the church can't seem to figure that out. The church fights one another, backbites against one another, cuts one another, gossips against one another, and you don't even realize you're cutting yourself because you're part of the same body. When you are slandering a brother or sister in Christ, you're actually cutting your own throat because you're connected to the same body. And the church is not an organization, it's an organism. The church is a body, not a ministry. So there's this weird thing in churchianity where churches are like gangs. My church, your church. My church better than your church. You left my church, so I hate you. Shut up. Are you, are you serious right now? This is not high school. And you know, this is, I mean, I've seen this stuff for 10 years, y'all, walking with the Lord, about to be 11. And this is why I stepped away from churchianity. And I don't do church politics. I don't do none of those little games. You know, I don't even, like, 
and when I discern that there's people like that I stay away and the Holy Spirit will tell me when stuff like that's happening because see what people don't understand about when you're prophetic is you get invited into conversations you were never invited into <laughs> do you understand what I just said your spirit gets taken into a conversation that you were never invited into so you can hear what people are saying so that the spirit will tell you don't even don't even go around them because we don't tolerate that we don't got time for that guys now the only reason the american church gets involved in such petty drama is because it's so convenient to be a christian that you can fight against each other and you'll be fine but how many of you know in iraq in afghanistan in north korea the church can, in china the real remnant can't afford to be gossiping about each other and having petty dramas with each other because the taliban's trying to come and kill them are you following listen america i i was reminded the holy spirit brought a dream back to my remembrance um yesterday and I remember in this dream, we were in a house meeting. It was this big mansion. It was a beautiful house. And we were having a little house revival, a little, uh, a little house fellowship. And I, rem I realized that the church was so comfortable in the house, right? And everything, like everybody was just chilling, just super calm, chilling, fellowshipping. But suddenly I heard in the streets a riot. And it was a Black Lives Matters riot. And this was happening in the dream. And I start hearing the noise of, of people marching the street, coming towards the house. And I started stepping towards the foyer to see out the window when right when I was headed to the door, they busted through the door. And I tried to run inside to warn everybody that, that people had invaded the house, but nobody would pay attention. And then they all flooded the house with guns and everything and started, uh, you know, turning the whole house upside down, turned it on, lit it on fire and shooting people, etc. Right. And I remember having this dream and I said, Lord, what is this about? He said, what's about to come to the church is about to be so abrupt that by the time you get to warn them, it's too late. It already entered. It already came. And. We were in this comfortable mansion, very luxurious house. But even in that luxury, we could not escape something marching down the street. Do you hear me? No matter how luxurious the church is in America, no matter how comfortable the church is in America, something is coming and it's going to try to barge right into your doors. If we don't just put down the petty fights with one another. Now, again, there's certain things that are no tolerance. You hear me? If there's sin in the church, if there's fornication in the church, if there's these things happening, they have to be addressed biblically. Now, it doesn't mean we ostracize people right out of the gate. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to fall into sin. Amen. And our responsibility is to restore such a one with grace. Galatians 6.1. Because if you don't try to restore a brother or sister with grace, you too will fall into the same thing that they fell into. Are you hearing so we ought to learn how to love one another and bear one another's burdens. You hear me? But if the, such a person is corrected and they refuse to repent, then you bring two to three witnesses, Matthew 18, right? And if they still refuse to repent, you bring it to the leadership. They address it. If they still refuse to repent, you bring it in front of the church and you cast them out as a Gentile, as a heathen. Amen? They're no longer a part of the body you follow what i'm saying so there certainly is a way to deal with certain things because we preached about no compromise you remember that message there's certainly a way to deal with certain things and have no compromise but there's also a way to, sh to to cover one another's burdens cover one another's sin amen and pray for one another that we may be healed the bible says confess your sins one to another then pray for one another that you may be healed amen so i'm just giving a prophetic warning that i believe that if the church doesn't unite for the right reasons and stops dividing for the wrong reasons that something is going to come so abrupt on the church that it won't even be ready when it comes precisely the american church
The only thing holding the wrath of God from falling on this nation is those who are interceding, the remnant. But there will come a time where that, that won't uphold it if we don't do the first thing, which is repent. Amen? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Now you do realize that in the time, in, in, the, in the days of the Old Testament when this was written, when God called the nation to pray, you know what happened in Israel? The entire nation gathered and prayed. The entire nation. Now you have to understand under the new covenant, yes, Israel is still a nation. And God still deals with Israel. But the church is considered a nation. Are you following? Say we are a nation. Because we are citizens, right? We are a nation. We're not a church in the sense of some ministry now there's ministries in the church but the church is not a ministry because a ministry a ministry can have an organizational structure but the church is not an organization it's an organism and as an organism it's also a nation because within Christ is a nation so we ought to be like a country, like a nation. This, is, this will shift the way you see the church. Because a lot of times you see the church is my church, your church, this church, that church. The church is the body of Christ. Amen? We are a nation. Come on. There's war in the atmosphere right now. Mastiena, Masti. 